St Agnes in Bermontoffs is right on the edge of Leeds city centre. The Café Church project cost around £2,000 and involved some money from the Darcy's and Fresh Expressions Fund. Very good to be here today in Bermontoffs, looking towards inner city Leeds and tremendous fun going on in the back indeed, indeed. Now what's the purpose of this activity? Well, every day in term time there are families passing by the, the front of the church coming from our nearest primary school just up the road. Um, and this is a, um, an attempt just to attract attention and to, to put a friendly human face um, onto the church and a way of drawing people in. Um, we hope that people coming through the door come to, to Cafe Church um, come and join them. Did you have many young families involved with church before you started the project? Very few. We have about half a dozen children who come with varying degrees of regularity on a Sunday morning, um, but really very few. Inside the church, Adults and children alike are invited to follow a series of stations around the building where they can pray, listen or engage in an activity designed to explore their faith. It feels as though we're on a pilgrimage through St Agnes Church. What do you use this area for? Well, we gather here when we first um, come into the main part of the church. We sing a song um, and we come back here later for a story time, a Bible story. This is our story circle. Um, and there are many activities spread out around the church, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you later. Um, but really it's set out as a prayer journey, which can take us closer to the heart of God. That's the, the ultimate aim of it. Margaret, when you conceived this project, why did you decide to go for a cafe-style church? Because I believe that food draws people together and it helps to build a, a sense of belonging, a, a sense of community. There was one big pizza. For me, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Take the plates, put it on the plate, Lee. Oh, thank you, Lee. It's only two for five. Oh, thank you, Lee. Oh, thank you, Lee. Which days of the week is Cafe Church open? At the moment, it's once a month on Thursday after school, about half past three to half past four. God is with me in dark times. Jesus make me strong. Thank you, God, for fun. My name is Liam, this is my picture. I began to wonder if there were ways in which we might be able to do church which would be more accessible for people not familiar with church culture or for whom Sunday morning is just not a good time, it, it's, um, as, as is the case for many people. Um, there wasn't anything that we could do immediately but I asked the rest of the church to, um, to pray with me about what might be possible. So a lot of prayer and thought, how much yes. did the project cost you? Um, we had an initial gift of around about £400, which we spent on a little bit of ambient lighting and um, felt tip pens and glue sticks and um, um, some of the practical basics. The church council then agreed to um, put down a little bit of carpeting in three small areas to make it more inviting. And um, the um, Diocesan Fresh Expressions Fund then matched that with a further £800. So did any of this work require faculty permission? We um, had permission from the Archdeacon to put down the three pieces of carpet. He just wanted to come and have a look at the colour. Um, that was it. We, the, the pews that are missing were taken out about 30 years ago, so they were already gone. And it was just a case of using the exi existing space creatively. So what can we learn from St Agnes? Firstly, be honest. Take a good look at the resources you've already got. Secondly, be creative. Do you really need an expensive project? And thirdly, be flexible. How can you use your current assets differently? St Cyprian's is in the same parish as St Agnes. It's based in Hare Hills, a neighbouring community in Leeds, and their project involved having a new church hall built, which, thanks to the intervention of developers, cost them absolutely nothing. Here we are sitting in the courtyard between St Cyprian with St James Church and their new church hall in Hare Hills. Sue, could you tell me a little bit about how it all started? 
Uh, one Thursday morning, our ladies came out of the Mums and Tots group and were approached by a developer, and it went on from there. And did this developer come from the Primary Health Care Trust? Yes, they did. Yes. So what happened next? There were discussions within, within the PCC. It was thought through very carefully. Um, when the, the decision was taken to go ahead with the project, uh, the, the basic plan was that the church would sell the old hall and the, um, the scout and guide hut um, and build a new church hall together with a doctor's surgery. Two separate buildings, but basically in exchange for the land, a new church hall would be built together with a lump sum which would help cover things like solic uh, solicitor's costs. Uh. What luck! Having a developer build you a brand new church hall. But there was also a lot of hard work involved. In addition to the steering committee from within the church, which was appointed by the PCC, the diocese provided a valuer, a solicitor and an architect, and they worked with the steering group throughout the whole project. The new church hall and rooms have been sympathetically joined to the older church building. In what ways has the site changed over the three and a half years that this has been going on? It's been transformed, hasn't it? Absolutely, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. With the vicarage, the church already here, the, the, the new, new church hall and the doctor's surgery, it's, it's a whole new life for this corner of, um, yeah. of an area that, that, that has its problems. And have you had issues of security to address? Yes, from the very beginning. Um, the brownies and guides have always had a problem, haven't they? They have. They had, as Margaret said, in their own hall, um, but they felt they had to move out. 